It's me and Nita, and Nita is going to be my moderator tonight. And she's got a little bit of a rasp, so don't get everybody get all you know like attracted to her and everything, because you know how the rasp does. Everybody <laughs> like that. Uh, so no come ons, come on, calm down. Uh, <laughs> but we're very excited and. Y'all, the stupid bot is still on. So just ignore the bot, okay? Because it's talking about all kinds of stupid things. Just ignore the bot. I need to turn it off. I totally forgot until just this very second that that stupid bot was going on. Anyway, Nita, how you doing, honey bun? Not too bad. Not too bad. I'm yeah. getting better. Still a bit weak. Trying to, you know, gain some strength back, but doing pretty good. You look good. Thank you. Yeah, you look good. Because we've been seeing you being very, very ill, and it's not fun watching your friend like that. But you look real good now. And I know you're on the mix, so very happy about that. I'll be happy to get back to work. I know, right? You never thought you'd hear yourself say that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I keep thinking about how much work there is to do and how oh. I haven't managed to get to it and it just kind of starts to weigh on you after a while yes yes i i i hear that too it's all you can think about you're like oh it's like okay i'm not getting this project done i'm not getting that project done and there's the kilns need to be fired and this needs to be done and i need to get this done and you know and there's no way the to do it yeah well even though the husband helps he's he's not always the greatest at doing the things that need doing. Yeah. 
I hear you. And try, they, but yeah, I know. Nobody ever cleans quite the way you want that, want it to be I, done. I know. I, know. I, I hear you on that one. You have to like, I've been in the place where you kind of got to pick your battles a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, at least they're helping. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see who's here. If somebody loves your mug. Angela. Angela Stutinger loves your mug, Nita. Oh, my poo mug. <laughs> uh, we have Sean here. I see Kay is here. Mary Jane is here. Did I find my fabric, Yvette? Um, you mean for this project? Because no. I mean, I don't know where all my stuff is. So now I'm just going to work on... Um, I'm going to work on Coral Reef. So it's still uh, a Judy Niemeyer quilt. It's just not the one I've been doing on camera. Um, it's the one that I've been doing in class. And so I'm going to do a little bit of work on this one. And this is also the one that I'm going to take with me um, to Judy Niemeyer's quilting retreat, which I leave on Sunday. So won't have a live next week unless somehow I'm able to do it. I don't know what the Wi-Fi is going to be like. I don't know a lot of that stuff. So I'm not sure. Um, so it's probably, let's just say there's not going to be a live. And if there is one, it's certainly not going to be like this. So, um, so there you go. <laughs> um, Lori Lasalis, Lasalis here. Lori says, feel better, Nita. I'm sure that me that's meant for Nita. Yeah. Shelly Stewart is here. Vicky's Sewing Adventures is here. Sherry's here. Hi, Sherry. Netta's here. Hi, Netta. Heather Gomer here. here. Angela Stoutinger, Vicky. Um, Vicky Sewing Adventures. Kay is here from Kay's Pur from the Purple Wall. We have oh Judy L, Mary Jane Ellinger, Laura Veach, Barbara Mattiacci, Heather Grintz, Carrie Livingood. Oh my goodness, how many more did I miss? <laughs> I think we missed a lot, <laughs> but we're doing the best we can, guys. If we missed you and you want us to say, hey, um, do it like an yeah. at. Yeah, do we get yeah, our at Yvette and the Yvette Renee, sorry. Um, hold on. Yeah. I'm trying to find a picture because somebody wants to see what I'm working on. What did I do with that? I just had the um, thing here. Y'all saw Scrunching here. That's Miss Seely. So yeah. The one that I'm working who's, on. Tonight. Is that the guy who sews? Is that um, Sean? Yeah, I was going to say, is that Sean? Yeah. So this is Coral Reef, and this is um, how I designed mine. So those are my, my colorways. Um, and so this is the one. I'm going to be working on a piece of this tonight, and... It's also what I'm going to be taking with me to uh, Judy's retreat. And so I'm hoping I can get a lot done. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish, but um, it is an entire week of doing nothing but sewing. Well, Tanya K says that she's so jealous. I got a notific notification for her retreats a couple of days ago, hoping to go in a year or two. Have fun. Oh, I, I intend to have fun. Let's see, I gotta find a pen that's not a friction pen, because I'll just make it go away. Uh hold on. I can't believe I can't find a pen. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's like all I have around here is friction pins. Function <laughs> says, whoa, that's frightening and spectacular. Linda Faust says that is very pretty. Angela Stoutinger says that's beautiful. Lori LaSalle says, wow, it's beautiful. Tanya K says your coral reef is gorgeous. Thanks. Susan O'Neill says it's gorgeous. Everybody says, wow, it's beautiful. Did I show you guys what I have done so far? I think I showed that one the last time. but um... And Christy V wants to know if that's the retreat in Montana. Yes, it's in Montana. And this is the piece that I have done so far. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So this is like 
the very tippity top of the left side. This is not even a quarter of it. This is like maybe an eighth. <laughs> Cause the, it finishes at like 99 by 99, something like that. It's huge. Um, the colors are just amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so that's what I, I have a little bit more than this done, but this is what I have uh, connected so far. So there you go. Christy V says, lucky girl, my favorite state. You're going to love it. I've never been to Montana, so I'm very excited to go, actually. Um, I mean, Montana I is gorgeous. <laughs> I plan to sew, like, the whole time. I just want to sit and sew. And apparently I always look very, like, I'm very serious when I'm sewing. So, I don't know. Concentrate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um okay well i guess i can get started sewing actually i'm just going to be writing down um the colors on each piece it's a good idea whenever you're um putting it together that you on each little piece if you put the color that goes where you know in each spot then you don't have to worry about getting confused and you just look on your on your sheet and boom there you go you know what color to go next so that's what I'm doing right now. Um, Isn't it kind of backwards when you put it on there? If you if yeah. you put it on there, you put it on there backwards, right? Correct. So when you're looking at your pattern, if when you're when the the curve is going and you have like the red up here, whoop, trying to be in the camera. When you got the red here and then you got orange, yellow, green, blue, then when you're putting it on your paper, you want red to be on this side. And then going this way um, because then when you flip it around now your red is where it needs to be so yes you want to label everything backwards sort of yes ma'am <laughs> and if you don't do it the first time be consistent and make sure everything goes the, the, way, the same if, <laughs> if you mess it up the first time just keep messing it up just keep, what however you start continue um because then it's like it, it'll look like it, it should anyway you know it's just colors. denise white she was in british columbia directly above montana Ooh, oh sandra kenny says my husband was born in kalispell montana my father lived in kalispell montana for nearly most of his life most of his i will say most of his adult life he was born in oregon it's a small world and what is uh, Angela Stoutinger wants to know? What is that cute roll on your shelf with the cats? Is that your sew it's together a, bag? It's a sew together cats together bag. Yes. Somebody, um, a swap partner, made that for me. And so it was, and it was like sort of a hexy swap. So she has some hexies on there. And <laughs> hey, says you don't need new friends Yvette you have us I've got loads of friends already you're right <laughs> and then she has all this stuff inside fabric Super cute. and everything yeah so she stuffed it full of stuff I haven't even taken anything out that she put in there I've left it exactly as it came to me <laughs> and I obviously love it so I put it right there That's so cute. <laughs> yep. Oh, Lori McFowl says she's skied in Kalispell, Montana, and it was amazing. I'm sure. Kalispell's really pretty. That's where I'm going. That's exactly where. Ugh, okay, what am I doing here? And Denise White said, whereabouts in Montana? You're going to Kalispell, right? Yes, Kalispell. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Pam Colburn <laughs> says, OMG, I'm trying to finish hand sewing the binding on this quilt and my cat insists on being on me and the quilt. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, welcome to the life of Nerd. cat mother. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, I think I was labeling this wrong. Good thing I've only done two of them. Because if I'm doing this little guy, what's the other little guy look like? Oh, yeah. Okay, that little guy is going over there. Hold up. Let me look at the other side of this. Yeah, I think that's correct. Hold up. That top little guy. Okay, there's that little guy. That's that one. This one is over here. Okay, this should be... I need to put it where it's pink. Oh, wait, it's supposed to go the other way supposed to go the other way okay so pink orange yellow dark green light blue hmm that's not what I did on there but okay as long as I do them all the same, it's not going to matter. Dark green, light blue, blue, purple. Netta wants to know if you iron your papers to flatten them out. Yes, ma'am. Kay says her brain is not big enough to handle that kind of pattern. You totally could do it. You do just one piece at a time. One piece at a time. And Heather says, this is why we label in pencil. I don't like pencils. Sorry. I hear what you're saying, but like, just like, like this, I don't even like this newspaper because if there's any kind of feeling like I'm, it's rubbing off on me or something, I'm getting black on my head. I, I hate that. I hate all, anything to do with that. So... That's why I won't use a pencil. <laughs> okay. Nita, would you like me to uh, switch to a just me and the picture in picture? That would be nice, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we are with the picture in picture. <laughs> Uh, and you're gonna this this camera it, it's my ipad and it's always like moving around i apologize i even put like this giant weight on it so that it won't move and it still does so i, I there's nothing else i could do i mean i've got i don't know it doesn't move that badly so i don't know how anyone can be <clears throat> yes Kay. i have a lurker my my husband has this nasty habit of always showing up when i have a live he can't, he can't sit in the living room or go somewhere else. No, no, he's got to be right here. But um, Angela asked me, how is the house coming along? Uh, well, <laughs> good question. <laughs> I was just going to leave that one to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even certain how to describe what kind of, 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 situation we're in at the moment but it's kind of like being in a court battle back and forth back and forth back and forth oh. no you can't do this yes if this has to be this way this wouldn't be like this if you didn't do that you need to do this because you waited too long for that and it's just it's just craziness <sighs> insurance companies make me mad I don't, I've never heard anyone say that they were excited with their insurance company. So I don't even understand. It doesn't make any sense for them to not take care of things in a timely manner. I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't even make sense. So I, I don't know. Any more than they absolutely have to, but because the price of things is going up they're they're like, well, we're, we're only going to pay so much. Well, you know, if you didn't ask for 15 billion lists of every tiny little penny that was spent for every nail, screw, nut, bolt, plaster, whatever, we wouldn't be in this situation, but you wanted a complete itemized statement from the contractor before he even was able to get started. And now that you've made him do like six months worth of work and you're still saying, well, no, we can't do that. Absolutely crazy. I don't. I'm so worried. I don't even know what to. Uh... <laughs> yes, Heather, they make everybody mad. 
there was a question good goods good goods wants to know you, did you get her quilt quilted that's postcard that's elizabeth did i get the the what quilted postcard quilted postcard um did you send it to boston post road because if so i have not been to that mailbox in a bit i'm at, i would i need to go because i don't think i i, I haven't <laughs> Linda Parsons wants to know if there will be singing later. Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> I should have Linda come over here and sing. Oh, you if only sing, I could do you that. Should wild thing. You should sing Wild Thing. I don't know that I could sing Wild Thing. I mean, really, like all I know is Wild Thing. You make my heart sing. You make everything. That's about all I know. I don't think that's going to satisfy anybody, but there you go. <laughs> wow, thing. I think I love you. <laughs> that's about it. That's all I got. <laughs> did your husband like that? Jimmy, did you like that? Did you like that song? I was not even paying attention. I had my earphones. He says he's not paying attention. Uh, so this time uh -oh. he won't get to hear you sing it. That's it. He missed it. He missed it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully everybody else liked it. I don't know where to <laughs> <What made laughs> you come up with a wild thing. <laughs> You know what I think of whenever I hear that song? I think of, um, what's that movie with, uh, who is it? He's the baseball player and he's got the shaved head. No idea. Major, I think it's, a, I think the name of the movie is Major League or something like that. I, anyways, that's what I think of. I'm sure somebody's going to say it in the chat. Okay, so Marie Han came in. Hi, Marie. And Nancy Gut says, you know, Great Balls of Fire is a song as well. Sing uh, it, girl. I know. I really, I don't really know that one. I know that a dude from Louisiana sang it, but um, all I know is, goodness gracious, Great Balls of Fire. And then I know I know that I like the song, but I don't really know the words. Like I'm one of those people that I will pretty much sing anything as long as it sounds like it goes with the with the movie or with the song. I, I don't even care if I've got the lyrics correct. But um what's that? Kay says, Kay says Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen, that's it. Yes. I don't Charlie know why. Sheen. He's not like a, a, an actor that I'm like enamored with or anything, but I love him in that movie. <laughs> yeah. when, whenever I hear Wild Thing, I don't think of movies. I think of my, my good friend George and all his brothers. They had a nice band, and George, the only songs that George, the only song George would sing was Wild Thing. <laughs> great. It's a great song. It is. <laughs> it's a great song. All right, so now I've got this thing. I've got them labeled. Let me put that down there. I'm just going to sew stuff. I don't know. I Practically should... Creative says, howdy, y'all. Hello. Welcome. Tamala71 came in. She says, hello, everyone. Hi, Tamala. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth says, young Charlie Sheen, heart eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like me. People think I'm really crazy, but I think I think uh, Robert Downey Jr. is, is kind of hot. I think he's good looking. I actually, I like uh, Robert Downey Jr. He's not like one of the ones I would say is like my fave, but I like him a lot. I think he's a great actor. He's a very good actor. He has a nice bod, too. 
Very, very, very well proportioned. I, I don't think I remember checking his bot out. I'll have to do that sometime. God, it took me by surprise, though. You know, I was like, oh, wow, he's really got a nice body. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me where I can see his body, like in what movie, and then I'll go Man. and check that out. Man. Which man? In Iron Man. Iron Man. Okay. Yeah, in Iron Man. I didn't know he was like, I thought he always had the suit on. You mean even with the suit on? He does not always have the suit on. Oh, okay. It all out. Iron Man. In the first Iron Man, he, you, you don't get to see him with the suit on in the very beginning because he hasn't made one yet. Oh. I have to tell you, I'm not a big, like, superhero movie watcher, just to be honest. So I haven't really, I mean, I have, like, like, sort of listened in while Jim is watching, but I don't really, I, I don't know. I guess I'm just not a huge fan. I think they just, I, I was, I liked the superhero movies till they just started doing too many. Like how many flipping, exactly. yeah, it, it was, you know, I, I just thought it was, it's too much. It was too much. It got a little bit out of control there. Yeah. Melissa, well, it's fun. Nita Henderson this <laughs> evening. I have to plug in my iron, guys. That's what I'm doing. True, Elizabeth. His story is very inspiring. I mean, he 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 nearly messed up his entire life. Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. Oh yes, I know. It's awful. But you know what? He came out of it, so. That's exactly right. That's what I'm saying. That's why she was saying he's inspiring. His story is very inspiring. Because even though you think you can't get past some of the things that you've done in your life or, you know, even drug addiction or alcohol, there there are ways to do it. If you're determined and you have the support you need, you can. Yes, you can. You have to believe in yourself. And let your friends help you. Kathleen Crowa came in. She says, hello. I hope you all are well. Hi, Kathleen. Paula Van Deden, she says, hello, hello. Hi, Paula. Just coming over to get my acorn pin. I just forgot everything before I came over here, didn't I? <laughs> I probably just made that rock like nobody's business. I the acorn is the one that has the the uh, starch in it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I like. I don't know if you've noticed that Shirley Heineman she uses she uses a water brush. Uh huh. Which is usually an art supply for like watercolors and such. And just put you just put the starch in the water brush like your best press or whatever you put it in the water brush yeah. and it's refilling. Yep. Yeah. I really liked that idea. Well, one, when I started using this pen, oh my goodness, like I, I can't not use it now. I use it all the time now, like religiously. <laughs> well, I think the reason she went with the water brush is because she wasn't able to get one of those in Canada. Yeah, that happens. And it's a really good alternative. Yeah. Or it could have been that it was way expensive, I'm sure. Everything's more expensive when you leave the state. Way more expensive. Yeah, it's crazy. You don't realize how how expensive it can get until you go somewhere else. Yeah. This is true. <laughs> Elizabeth says fabric addiction and quilting goes hand in hand, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I think you're probably right. <laughs> oh, she says yes, and practically creative says yes and no. They can be separate hobbies. <laughs> oh, this is funny. This is true too. I actually I know somebody. I don't remember who it is, but somebody that I had met once. 
who basically bought fabric all the time, but didn't sew or anything, like just loved fabric. So had fabric everywhere and it was like, okay. I'm not sure why you would just have fabric though. Fabric, I mean, the whole idea of having fabric is that you can use it for something. I used to collect um, upholstery fabrics. Yeah. Would be, would be, well, why do you want, if I saw one that I really liked, I would be like, yeah, I, I want to get that fabric. And I would get two or three yards of it. And people say, why do you do that? Well, because I had dining room chairs that were very simple to reupholster. So after seven kids, you kind of need to reupholster them on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> Being able to just go to your stash and grab something that might work is really nice <laughs> and yep. P. Patty C says hi everyone finishing up yet another memory bear then I get to paper piece still working on the Halloween box Kathleen Theralt says the water brush sounds like a really good idea it is I it absolutely is and honestly you can you can buy them packs of three with small medium and large tips so if you have longer seams, you use the larger one. If you have really small seams, if you're doing small paper piecing, the little small tip is 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 very nice for that too. I just I thought it was such a great idea, and I I'm gonna tell you I saw it on Shirley Heineman's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, her YouTube is called Around to It. Like I'm gonna get around. one word. <laughs> yep, all one word. All one word. <laughs> Elizabeth says, I have all the time in the world to look at and buy fabric, never enough time to actually sew. So maybe you're right. <laughs> and Kathleen Thrall says, buying fabric is definitely a hobby. It is definitely a hobby. Robbie Harrell came in and says, hello, everyone. Finally made it. Yay. Robbie. <coughs> I'm sorry. Excuse me. You're okay, honey bun. Lori LaSalle wants to know, what was the pen you were showing that she loves? It's her acorn pen. It's a, it's a starch pen. Might be able the to acorn see pen. Can't see it. Acorn precision piecing products. And this little guy is, it's, uh, you can buy new tips and you can buy the refill for it. And then you just keep refilling this little guy. And it's got this tip. And you just put it on, um, on your seam, right on your seam and then, uh, press it. And it makes your seam extremely flat. So it's really amazing. Thank you, Kathleen Throughout, for reminding everyone to give Yvette a thumbs up. Thanks, Kathleen. Thank you, everybody, for giving me the thumbs up. If you are not already subscribed, that would be lovely, too. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, I'm trying really hard to get to 11,000. I think I got like 15 people to go or something. So that'll be exciting once that happens. And earlier, Netta said that everyone has a past. It's how you deal with it. When we were talking about um, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And she's correct. Heather Brent says it, or who, who somebody agreed with her 100%. Shelly. Shelly S., I agree with you 100%, Netta. I, I absolutely agree. Everybody has a cross to bear. I always say everyone has a cross to bear. Everyone has their burdens. It's how they deal with them that makes them different or stand out. Tracy Richmond just came in. Hi, Tracy. I just purchased, purchased that pen and haven't had a chance to use it yet. Looking forward to to see those nice flat seams. I yeah. agree. Yes. It's like, you know, everyone was talking about it. And then 
Stephanie sent one in a project, one of her project boxes. And now I'm in love with it now. I can't, I can't live without it. <laughs> but, you Denise know, I'm lying flat. Started... Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Denise White says the acorn starter kits in Canada are $37. Wow. I have to say, though, I think it's worth it, but that's just me. I, I mean, I'm using it, and you can get the refills after that. Like, you don't have to pay the full price each time, and the you don't need a whole lot of the fluid. So, like, just what's in this pen, I've been using it for, like, a while now. I haven't had to refill yet. So it goes a long way, um, which I, I appreciate that, too. Kim Hartman says, I finally made it home from work to watch, to watch. I've never heard of those pens until the other day when I watched Stephanie. Yep. And Deborah Ryan, hello. She says, she hasn't been here for a while. What quilt are you working on? She is working on the Coral Reef. Yes. By Judy Niemeyer. Yep, that's what I'm working on. And let's see, I, I still have it right here. So here's the, this is the quilt. And I mm -hmm. in and I put the colors that I wanted. So this is my exact design that I am making right now. Um, and this is the piece I'm working on right now. That's the finished side. And then here's the printed side. And Carrie Living Good says, haven't been here for a while. Uh, nope, it's Carrie Living Good says, same here. It works so well, especially on my blocks with lots of seams. She's talking about the acorn pen working really well. Yeah. Excellent. And Tracy Richmond says, yep, it was a little costly, but I already used used the glue and love it. So I'm sure the pen will be worth it as well. Yep. And Kathleen Cole wants to know, where did you get the pen? Did you got it from Stephanie Stitches? Yes. Yeah, I got it from Stephanie's um, project box, but I know she also sells them in her Etsy shop. And if you go on Etsy, it's Stephanie's Supply Shop. And Shirley Heineman said she had to switch accounts. Again, Shirley Heineman's the one that 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 shows how to use it, use a water pen in the same way by just adding. Um, your best press or whatever to the water pen. Yep. Hi, Shirley. I know I didn't say hey. Oh my goodness. Pamela Colburn said a bunch of women were in my sh my local quilt shop yesterday stocking up on fabric. They said it's much cheaper here than where they live in Canada. They had huge bags of fabric. It was crazy. Yeah, you never you never know how much to appreciate what you have at home until you go somewhere else and you find out how much they're paying. Yeah, somebody from Germany just placed an order in my shop. Because, you know, I've got everything 40% off. Well, most everything. And uh, so I was like, wow. Holy cow. <laughs> Practically Creative wants to know, do I get booted at the next level or what? No, you just, <laughs> no, you just keep advancing. 
it's just a bot. I was I was trying to do something fun and then I was going to turn it off and then I never turned it off and I don't know. Denise White says she's just started an Alchemist Crystals by Judy Niemeyer. That's a lovely one. Yes. I probably Kim Martin. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I was just saying I probably have the pattern because I have like a million of them. I don't have a million, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kim Hartman said, I received my order from you the other day and it's amazing. I love the packaging. I started working on a paper piece project from the book. I hope I can do it. We know you can, Kim. We know you can do it. You can do it. Okay. And Mary Baldwin wants to know, what do the levels mean? I, they mean absolutely nothing. The higher your number goes, the bigger the fan, the more I love it. <laughs> it, it's a measure of how much you participate yes so like the more you talk in chat uh the higher your number goes Ooh, heather has started collecting fabric for her fractured skull quilt netta has actually started cutting fabric for her judy niemeyer quilt are you doing um Rainbow Hosta, or what are you, What? which one are you, I can't remember which one she's doing. I don't really remember off the top of my head either. Because you guys got. Hello? Stephanie, everyone wants to know if you have acorn pens in your shop. <laughs> I kind of told them you did, Steph. <laughs> yeah. We, we keep telling him that's where to go get it. He's going to sell out in five minutes. <laughs> oh, she's ra working on Rainbow Hosta. Ah, okay. Yeah, Jennifer Corney, it's Nita Henderson. And yes, you only hear my voice because I have a lurker, and I'd rather we didn't have everybody showing on the. <laughs> on the video. <laughs> Plus, it's so that you can watch me sew. That's all. <laughs> Del Marie says, reminds me of whose line is it anyway where the points don't <laughs> matter. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Oh, my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> what are the points for? Nothing. And Stephanie says she does have them in her shop, ladies. So if you're interested in an acorn pen, Stephanie Stitches has them in her shop. Yep, it's Stephanie's Supply Shop. Stephanie, why don't you uh, type in your your shop so they can go in and buy some. I'm just warning y'all, though, it's another thing that you're just going to be addicted to because, it. I mean, the seam is so flat. <laughs> Let me look at it. It's like, and what I noticed is, like, you know how you'll you'll get your seam, like, pretty flat, right? And then, but then you set it aside for, like, a couple of days and you come back and it, it's, it's a little puffy. You know what I mean? Like, the, especially the ones that aren't attached to anything yet that are kind of, like, just laying there, then it'll, it'll start to rise and... I haven't noticed a whole bunch of that with, I, I, in fact, I haven't noticed it at all. It stays like pretty flat. And I love that for sure. You don't have to keep pressing things over and over if you've, you know, walked away for a little bit. Sammy. Hi, Sammy came over. Hi. Hi. Go 
Let's see over here. Let's see with mom. Can I see hello? Where'd you go? Can I see Cindy? Where'd you go? Oh, there you are. Come see. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Hi. <laughs> hey, you. She's all like, I just want a little scratch on the cheek. That's all I want. I don't want nobody to pick me up. <sighs> You're so cute, honey bun. You are. Um, Elizabeth has to sit, has to put her baby down for bed. She said it's been fun chatting. She wants you to check your mailbox, Yvette, and I, let let her know if you got your your postcard. Okay, I will. Absolutely. And practically creative wants to know. Uh, she says I'm assuming that you put all the fa of your fabrics in order beforehand. Yes. Yes, I do. And also I have it written on my template so I know which color goes where. So even if for some reason these aren't in order, um, I can always pull something different out if I have not put them directly in the correct order or if I've changed something, like changed my mind about where I want something or whatever, um, then I can go ahead and do that. So I have had it written here and I have them in what I think is the correct order. Practically creative, so she's only watched people do paper piecing. Never, she's she's uh, never tried it. You really should. You should, if you're not in in piecing it real, you should subscribe to piecing it real and start at the beginning. Go at your own pace. Yvette will show you in her videos there, step by step, how to do it. She starts with some simple blocks and moves you to more complicated ones, and you'll be a confident paper piecer before you know it. Yes, and um, I'm running a special right now, so if you wanna try your first month for half off, um, I think the code is half first month. Is that what it is? Hold on, I have to go and look. I have no idea. <laughs> Hold on. I know I have it. I have it posting on Facebook and a lot of other places. Um, I saw it on Facebook a couple of times and I just kind of. Yeah, I just started it. So I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but it's like, um, hold on. I'll have it. It is first half off. So first half off and you'll get 50% off your first month. Tracy Richmond, she says, I've done the It's So Emma foundation paper piecing, but I'm intimidated by what you're doing right now. Not sure I'm ready for this type of paper piecing yet. Well, Tracy, I'm going to say the same thing I said before. If it intimidates you, she does have a subscription program and you sign up, you go into Piecing It Real. There's the beginner videos, and she will take you one project at a time, step by step, through her videos on how to do it. You can stop, pause, rewind, and and keep going back until you have it. And I guarantee if you follow that program, you follow along with her for a couple of projects, you will be a confident paper piecer and ready to tackle more complicated things in no time. Absolutely. And the only thing with... Um with Judy's patterns, um, you know, she when you open up her pattern and, you know, you <laughs> you start looking at the pages and there's like, you know, it's like this thick and you're thinking, oh, no, there's no way. She's very verbose in her patterns. And um, so this is one way where I'm able to just kind of show you that, you know, for, for me, I'm just going like one piece at a time. I'm just going to, I'm I'm having one piece at a time. I mean, it's kind of intimidating to me too, I have to tell you. I mean, it's a lot of paper. 
Um, I'm not one who is very good at reading how to do something. She does have uh, some very helpful illustrations and that helps as well. Um, but if you can, go and take a class with one of her certified instructors, it kind of opens your eyes as to how she does the patterns. Um, I think that, you know, if you are a confident uh, quilter to begin with, which I, you know, personally, I promote that. I think that we should all be confident in what we're doing. You can absolutely do it. Look at the pictures. I mean, so this is what I'm doing. So like, as I go, I figure out like, where does this piece fit in here? And so then I know that what I'm doing right now is, let me make sure I'm pointing to the right thing. So this piece, let me try to move this. This piece right here is the one that I'm doing. And so when before I started, I knew that my pink was going to be all the way on the left. So the only thing you do need to remember whenever you're foundation paper piecing is that when you're looking at the actual template, you're going to want to label everything quote unquote backwards, right? Because when I'm looking at this sheet, right, you would think, oh, so I want pink to be first over here. But no, because when you flip it over, see how now my pink is over here? So what you really want to do is you want to take the pink and you're going to start it on the other side so that whenever it flips over and you're actually seeing what's going to be your quilt, this is the right way. So if you could just remember to label it that way, and listen, if I had done this backwards, as long as I did all of them backwards, it would be fine because your colors would still go in the, in the way that they're supposed to. So it would have been okay. It just wouldn't have come out exactly like this. Do you know what I'm saying? So in this kind of instance where you have something like this, if you forget to do everything backwards, then it's okay because you're not looking at an actual picture of something or anything like that. You you've got everything in the correct place, just flipped. So it would have it would still be okay. Um, it's just one of the things about FPP. And yes, absolutely. You know, come over to piecing it real. Get that first month half off. I guarantee you won't want to go. We have a, an excellent community of quilters. We love each other and sew and, you know, kind of raise each other up and, and have a great time sewing. We're doing blocks of the month. We're doing swaps. We're doing all kinds of stuff. And, and we all nurture each other's growth. So, um, and Carla Heathoff wants to know if you sign up for the classes, are you locked in for a certain number of classes? Absolutely not. You sign up, you go at your own pace, you can take as many. If you can fit, get through all the classes in one month, then you can get through all the classes in one month and you don't have to stay. There are other benefits to staying, but you're not locked in. You can you can cancel your subscription at any time. Any time. No hurt feelings. <laughs> I think if you come and you, and you participate in the group, um, you'll find that... It's a really great group, um, and we do more than just you know one thing. We 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 try to keep it busy, and um, and and we're learning as we go. So if you ever have any suggestions or anything, we're completely open to it as well. So um, it's your membership too, and we want to make everyone happy. And it's, a, it's great. We love it. Jennifer Tony. Torney, she says you make it look so easy. You make it sound so easy. I'm not there yet, but aspire to trying FPP. You are very inspiring. And um, Jennifer, I would tell you that thank you so if you started, if you started with the uh, piecing it real, you would definitely have the the less the more simple patterns. She starts with some very simple patterns that will be easy for you to follow along. And they actually help you get the idea of what she was just saying about how things are a bit backwards. 
they help you wrap your brain around it. And then once it clicks in, you'll be like going, oh, well, that's not so bad. And even people who have arthritis can do it because you, you don't have to hold the tiny pieces together. You can, you know, it, it, even tiny pieces are easy to do because you just cut a larger piece of fabric, stick it there, sew on the line, flip it out. You're good to go. It's so, so simple. Yes, I, I definitely take you right from like I've never you could probably even never have quilted before and come in um, and learn how to paper piece. I go very, very slowly. I show you every single step. I don't skip anything. I don't take you from uh, point A to point L you know, without showing you everything in between. So it, you know, not everybody learns the same way. So if you find that it's not working for you, you've only paid half price that first month. Um, but I don't think that's true. I've, I've had most people say that, um, you know, they've, they've really been able to learn and I have everything in one spot. So you're not going to have to go all over the internet searching for all these different YouTube videos and stuff like that. I've got it all in one spot. And like Nita said, it's go at your own pace. So there are no, there's no time limit or anything. You have full access. As long as you have the membership, you have access to the whole thing. And, um, you know, Laurie LaSalle says, I joined a few months ago and have learned so much. Also love the Zoom sessions. Lots of fun. It, she's right. Our our Zoom, we she has a biweekly Zoom meeting. And it's kind of like going to a guild meeting. But we all get together via Zoom and we sew on projects. And we are able to ask Yvette questions. And in real time, get real time answers. And, and we support each other by saying, well, I tried this or maybe one of us tried something else. And it's just wonderful because we really get together and we, we get to see what other people are doing and how they interpreted the blocks. And it's just it's just so much fun. It's a wonderful community. And Del Marie says, I had no knowledge of FPP and I joined Piecing It Real. The lessons start out absolutely in the beginning and get you going very quickly at your own pace. Love it. Everyone is awesome. Del Marie, you would never know that you didn't know beforehand because I you would, do I would never know that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Everything you do is absolutely beautiful. So yeah. And Jennifer says she likes the idea of working at her own. <laughs> I'm sorry, working at her own pace. Ab absolutely, that's what makes that. That's what makes piecing a rail so so accessible to a person who who may never even have quilted before. Yeah, it is. It's simple. She makes it's simple and concise. It gives you this. She gives you the skills you need. She's very clear in her videos. And if you didn't catch something, you can always go back and do it again. She's just wonderful. I just I think that the videos really, really do help people get the hang of it. Oh, Gia wants to know that. Are you doing a spring project box? Yes. Um, so I'm in the middle of cutting all the fabric right now. <laughs> and then once I have all the boxes ready, uh, I decided not to do a pre-sale this time. I'm going to sell them once I have them ready. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm going off to do Judy Niemeyer retreat for a whole week starting on Sunday. So it's going to be at least a couple of weeks. And then um, hopefully I can get back and get everything finished up because I'm, I'm going to start. I just don't think I'll be able to finish before I leave. Um, so keep an eyeball out for that. It'll be another week or two. Gia says hint. <laughs> it's going to be a spring box. <laughs> That's the hint. That's the best you're going to get. I don't, I don't even get to know. I'm still just <laughs> up to the dark. <laughs> That's a great idea, Laurie LaSalle says you can look on the hashtag piecing it real on Instagram to see projects too. Yep. And Judy L says, okay, so I have to check this out. 
You should. Kelly, Gia, oh. Gia says, I want bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> I want bunnies. You're a little late <laughs> coming up with an idea. I'm already well past finish that part. <laughs> that part's already done. <laughs> The pattern's written, it's all finished. <laughs> Hopefully you will like it. I think you will. I think everybody's gonna love it. I love it. Of course I know I designed it, but I love it. <laughs> I like the way I like the way Laurie thinks. She wants to know if PIR group get early notification for the spring box. Yes, you do. You do. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's terrible, right? <laughs> I give you like a day's notice, so you will find out approximately 24 hours before anyone else. <laughs> she says, heart, heart, heart. <laughs> Denise White says, Judy Niemeyer courses are so educational and fun at the same time. <sighs> ah, Pamela says, it's beautiful. You'll all love it. If, if, no, if, if anyone's new here and doesn't know, Pamela Colburn is, is a pattern tester. So if she says it's gorgeous, trust me, it's going to be beautiful. Yep, she tested it. She knows. She knows what it looks like. <laughs> she says, can we just give you the credit card number now? <laughs> well, probably not a good idea because I, I lose things. <laughs> but it's going to be really pretty. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep up the project boxes. Um, kind of a long story. I'm, I want to, um, but this is good. It's going to be something that's an in progress kind of decision. So, um, but I'll always let you guys know if I decide to change something or or whatnot. I'll let you know. Um, Mary just came in. Hello, Mary. Hi, Mary. She said, I'm a little late, but that's okay. We don't mind if you're a little late. You're here. That's okay. We still got a half hour. You're good. I mean, I have to say the, the really great thing about FPP is even with everything else, you're still basically just sewing a straight line. I mean, it's, there's really nothing all that difficult. I mean, with this pattern, there are curves. Um, and there was a point where I was going to make a video with curves and I never got around to it. So hopefully I will really soon because curves are really very simple and forgiving. So once I show that to you, you'll just be like, mind blown. And I think that the problem is that when um, some things get like a bad rap, you know, like somebody will come out and say, oh my gosh, it's so hard to put zippers in. It's really not hard to put zippers in, guys. But I think it, because we've heard that so much, we've got it in our head that it's it's too hard. We can't do it. Uh, or we're terrified to even try. And I think that FPP has kind of gotten that kind of a, a rap as well. Um, you know, people are always thinking, are, are always saying, you know, oh, you got to think backwards. And but it, it's really not that hard, guys. I mean, listen, I'll be honest. When I, I taught myself how to foundation paper piece, I had a hard time finding um, instructions on how to do it. And the things that I would find were usually like, blogs where it was typed out and you would get like a couple of pictures or maybe you even if you got like 10 pictures it, it was very difficult for me because i learned better by watching someone do it and then doing it myself right away so that i kind of get the hang of it and it took me like a good year to year and a half to really get proficient at it um 
but and and even now I'll make a mistake now and then I'll accidentally sew the piece on backwards or I'll um, I mean just any number of things you know and it's just because really with FPP it's a good rule of thumb to really stay in the moment you know like try not to have too many distractions if you can um, I've now been doing FPP for like five years so um, it's easier for me to have this conversation with you and still get my uh, things correct but I have to say I have been live <laughs> and made mistakes and had to pull Jack out, you know, so it's, it, nobody's perfect. You're, if you make a mistake, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It just means you're human and you just fix the mistake or don't fix the mistake. It's totally up to you and move on, you know, just, okay, I learned from that. I really need to stay in the moment or, you know, whatever it is. Um, go ahead. So there. Christy says she loves it. Does that mean she's seen the spring project box too? Well, are you telling mom is George Sunshine? Because of course she's my bestie. <laughs> she says she loves it. She's my bestie. Hello, Christy. <laughs> and Stephanie has seen it. I mean, I'll say that. Stephanie has seen it. She and I kind of go back and forth on whether we want to whether we want to see it because like a lot of times for me i like surprises so i'll tell her don't show me your project i want to i want to be surprised whenever it comes out and sometimes she'll do the same and sometimes even it'll be i'm designing it and i'm thinking okay i i know you want it to be a surprise but i really need you to to look at this i really you know maybe she won't see the finished thing but she'll see like pieces of it because i need a little help or or whatever so um but i do typically keep it a secret <laughs> from everyone i know right I, I i feel a little bit jellyfish right now <laughs> no i don't i want to be surprised well, you don't have that much longer to wait. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I'm working on it. I'm I'm cutting fabric. <laughs> Not right this second, but. <laughs> she doesn't know how you do everything. She says she works full time and have a new business I recently started and I can barely keep up. Yeah, it's you'll hard. You'll catch your groove. Just take your take your time and remember to do once one thing at a time. That's all you can do. Just do one thing at a time and and you'll catch your groove. That's very true. And Stephanie says she likes it too. She says it's so lovely. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have um, seen uh, the Valentine box that Steph put out. And I know she doesn't have them anymore, but oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> when I started seeing everybody, like there are so many people who have already finished it. And it is so flippin' cute. Like I want to do it. <laughs> and I love the fabric that you picked. And I mean, it's just, it's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it. Um, TNC Norton wants to, has a newbie question. Does Yvette usually try to do lives this time on Wednesdays? Yes, almost every Wednesday. If she doesn't do one on Wednesday, she'll usually post on Instagram, Facebook, or via text message. If you've signed up for text messages that she's canceled the live for Wednesdays, but Wednesdays at 8 30 every, <clears throat> every Wednesday night. And um, I did let everybody know at the beginning of this live stream that next Wednesday, 
I will probably not have a live because I'm going to be at a Judy Niemeyer quilt retreat. Um, and I don't know what, uh, you know, their Wi-Fi is like and stuff like that. It could be great and it could be that the opportunity is there for me to do it. Um, so it's possible I may pop on for a little bit, but it, it's also equally possible that I'll just cancel it. So. And Kathleen Crow wants to know if you have ever worked on a Cindy Edgerton pattern. No, I haven't. I would love to, though. Who's the one who does the dragon found the dragon uh, paper piecing patterns? Like all dragons? Well, she does a, a lot of other things too, but um, sure. it's a, definitely the dragon. I'm really not sure. I have to look that up. I'm going to see if I can figure it out. Okay. No, the the person I'm I'm thinking of is for is she uh designed she's done a couple of different dragon patterns for for fandom stitches fandom in stitches and her name is Gretchen Kolhas. Okay, I know uh fandom in stitches. I didn't know her name. Well, there's a couple of people who do patterns for fandom and stitches, isn't there? I really don't know. I thought it was just one person, but I mean, hearing you say that, I don't, it's possible. Wait, wait, wait. There are dragon paper piecing patterns? Why has <laughs> no one told me this? Well, go to fandom and stitches and you will see a few because... I got a couple of guys in my house that are really into dragons, and I got a sister who thinks Fantasy World is, like, the best. So, of course, I had to find it a dragon. <laughs> dragons are fun. I'm telling you, sometimes men folk. Okay, so I made the trim, trim the tall tree by Cindy Edgerton. It turned out okay, but after watching Yvette and doing some of her patterns, I know I do a much better job. Kathleen Thoreau, I think you're absolutely right. Watching Yvette do what she does, and especially like in the piecing it real, when she did the videos, it made things just click so easily. And you feel like you're able to tackle any pattern after that. And I did. I thought, oh, I I, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I can't do this. And then I tackled a dachshund. And my dachshund came out so stinking cute. It was just adorable. <laughs> it was like absolutely adorable. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> I can't believe I gave it away, but I did. I gave it away. I might have to make that one again because, oh, my gosh, she, the little dog was just too cute. I know. I have things that I've given away where I'm like, what was I thinking? But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you're in a swap. You know, you have to kind of give it away. <laughs> <laughs> Donna Richie came in. She says hello. Hi, Donna. And Tracy Richmond wants to know if the box is a complete project. This particular one is, um, you're going to get everything for the top and the binding and not the backing because it's quite a big quilt. Um, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it's, it's a, it's a really good size quilt. 
Um, so, uh, and they also, it sells for, this particular one sells for $99. Um, but like I said, it, it's a big quilt and you get all of the fabric. In fact, I always make sure you have more than enough fabric. Um, some people have finished the project and then gone on to like make a pillow or two pillows <laughs> because you, you will have plenty of fabric. Um, and sometimes, um, and this is why I don't really set a, a just like a, a set price is because the projects will be different. Like the one for Christmas, um, it was a smaller size. It was sort of like a wall hanging. And so I was able to include everything for the the front, the binding, and the backing. Uh, and I think I put the batting in there, if it was that, that one. Um, so you really had every single thing you needed. So it really it depends on the size of the project and all that kind of stuff. Because I don't want the price to go up so high um, that it's not affordable. Yeah, exactly. In fact, you know, $99 is like that's pretty much as high as I would ever want to go. Um, I don't want it to make people feel like they can't, you know, be part of the project, but it is a larger project. And so, you know, the, unfortunately the price needed to be that high, but um, it, it's, it's really, I think it's great. I love it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop you there for a second. Those ladies who are asking where you can find the dragon patterns, I'm sending the link through now so you can you can try to hit that. And um, there was also, I believe, Jennifer Torney, she wants to know, do you use an add a, add a quarter or an add an eighth ruler? I use a add a quarter. If I am doing tiny piecing, then I use add an eighth. So it just depends. For, but for something like this, you would use add a quarter. Heather Grid says, holy crap, they have a lot of cool patterns. I know, right? Yeah, and they, they <laughs> some that are all that. falling down the rabbit hole. When you go to fandom and stitches, you go down the rabbit hole. It's like, oh my goodness, there is a whole bunch of them. <laughs> and don't they have a lot of free patterns? Yes, they do. Yeah. And the thing too is, is they have a lot of patterns and not all of them are very expensive, but oh my gosh, they are really good patterns. Yeah. They're really good. I, I wouldn't, I don't even know if I could wrap my head around all those angles, but these people are good. It's like, definitely. And if you do the, the piecing it real program, if you get on there and you watch those videos and you do the little projects first, before you know it, you'll be putting those together like a pro. Absolutely. And Yvette's kits, uh, Yvette's kits really do have lots of extra fabric. I have one I was busy I have one and I was being very careful, but I didn't need to be so much extra. I could have made two of them with it. <laughs> Sorry, Heather. I didn't mean to, you know, send you down another rabbit hole, but trust me, you're going to love it. Beth Elrod said, just joined you. Would love to try this one. You can do it. <laughs> Mary, I don't know if I can sew with my left foot and, and use the knee press with my right leg. I, I think I do. I, I'm either going to, I, I don't know. I, I, the, I, I, I think I just naturally do all right legged. All right foot, right knee. It's, it's right foot, right knee. I don't think I could get the hang of, of the, the using the gas pedal with the left foot because the left foot is for the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how it works. <laughs> Mary, I'm doing much better. I, I'm actually dressed today. 
I do sound a bit congested and I keep hitting the mute button if I have to cough, but I'm doing much better. It was touch and go there for a little while. I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe, you know, <laughs> at one point I was thinking, yeah, I, I, I just think I'll, I, I think I want to just give up right now. I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I don't want to see you practically creative. She knows if you if you take the knee lift off, you know, what would you do? You just sort of have to get the get the hang of keeping your heel on the floor so that you can use your knee and then use the tip of your toe, you know, just your toes to press the gas pedal so that you can kind of do that at the same time. One of the ladies at, um, you know, because I'm, I'm doing this coral reef class and this last couple of days that we had, um, we got snowed in, you know, it was like a blizzard here in Connecticut. And so um, one of the ladies who got snowed in with us, she had this new Bernina and the, like her um, presser foot broke like her gas pedal or whatever. She couldn't use it. So she had to keep using the, you know how you can start and stop? by she the start Yeah, and she was like, this is really weird. She had to turn it down to as slow as it would go. Because she was like, I, she goes, I'm just going to so wait. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't know how she did that. Because <laughs> the button. <laughs> right. But it was, it, it was, apparently it's very weird. I don't know. I didn't, I've never done that. Um, I know you can, uh, but she was, she was so frustrated that whole weekend. I think by the time we got done though, she was pretty proficient. <laughs> Practically Creative says, I looked for dragon, for dragons in fandom and stitches, found one that is 10 inches by 10 inches with eight, with 70 plus pieces. Yup. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And Wendy Kaiser says her 17 year old son made this, made a stitch pattern from fandom and stitches and had no problem. And she says anyone can do FPP. Absolutely. And if it still doesn't click in your head, I'm going to get I'm going to tell you again. Piecing it real. If you follow, if you join Piecing It Real, you could join it for half price right now. You join there, go on in there and take a look at the beginning patterns and go piece step by step. You'll be able to put that 70 plus piece dragon pattern together without too much difficulty. Nope. Ooh, Debbie Shore uses a machine with no foot pedal. See my my general machine it, it's a touch to start. I can I can take the foot pedal off. I don't even have to use it. I can just touch the button and sew. But you can't do that with a mechanical machine. So if you're if you have a strictly mechanical machine, like I got a, a baby lock jazz two for Christmas, and it's a strictly mechanical machine. That means there's no computerized parts to it. So it doesn't have a touch to start thing. You have to have your foot pedal to keep it going. And with Mary, I use my knee and my foot pedal all on the right side. I don't use my left foot for that because you know that's the clutch foot. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I learned to drive on it. I learned to drive on a standard transmission vehicle with a, a a very good friend of mine who had eight boys, and if she can teach eight boys to sew uh, to to drive, I thought, okay, well, she can teach me to drive. Well, she takes me to this really big mall. When I say big mall, I'm talking, you know, probably on the size of the one in in Raleigh or Durham or whatever the the big mall that's close to me. But it, I mean, it's huge. It was. It was absolutely huge. It's got a parking lot that you could drive around in for hours and you could actually get lost. And it has some one way roads and some that were not. But she took me on this road and she was, you know, with eight boys, you would think that she'd do a lot of yelling, but she was so quiet and she was so calm. And she says, okay, turn this way. And I turned down that road like she told me to. And it turned out to be a one way road. And I was looking at a semi coming at me and she said very calmly, Okay, stop the car, put it in reverse, let's back up. Just as calm as she could be. 
And I had her infant child in the car at the same time. I'm freaking out thinking I'm going to kill everybody. But no, I didn't. She taught me how to drive. Even, even when I stalled on a hill, she was very calm and taught me how to drive. And I never looked back. So from that point on, the left foot is for the clutch. It's, that's what it's for. It's for the clutch. It's for the clutch, not the gas. I could never drive a, a right-hand drive car. We had one in England. I couldn't drive it because it was standard transmission and required that you switch and use the left foot for the gas and the right foot for the clutch, and my brain just couldn't do that. I mean, I could switch the sides of the road, but my brain could not switch switch how to drive a standard car. I remember when we were driving a car, gosh, I don't even know. Pro it seems like m most of the time in Australia, we kept putting the windshield wipers on because <laughs> you'd go to turn the <laughs> signal, but it's on the other side. So instead of turning on the turn signal, you were turning on the windshield wipers. <laughs> so we would do it every time. Every time we were going to make a turn, <laughs> windshield wipers would come on. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. <laughs> It's so funny. You, you just never know the kind of weird things that you, you think, oh, I'm so glad. Tony Conway, she says she got a new a new Jazz 2 too. How do you like yours? I absolutely love mine, but it's so big that it's hard for me to put it up and take it down in my temporary accommodations. I, I can't wait to be able to have a space to put it up and just go nuts with it. I, I just, I mean... I'm just so excited. Yo, I think I'm going to finish this like right at the line. <laughs> right? You have, you have exactly one six more, minutes. One more piece to put on. And I got eight minutes. So then we can have finish this and then do a little Louisiana goodbye. <laughs> Our southern goodbye, whatever you want to say. <laughs> Practically reactive, she says she paid for her son to get driving lessons. It scared you too badly. <laughs> my son used to scare the daylights out of me. My oldest son is so attention deficit. You cannot talk to him while he's driving. Because you distract him too too easily. So I give I I, I would have to sit there and be very calm and just give him one word directions. Just one word, left, right, <laughs> not too fast, slow, you know, break. <laughs> and you can't shout it or, or do anything too distracting, no moving around or looking at your phone or anything. You just kind of have to sit there and let him drive. I remember when my mom was teaching me how to drive. <laughs> she, um, the first time... We we're driving on this frontage road and it, we're coming up to a curve, you know, and here's my mom. She's like, okay, you're going to want to slow down. And I don't know what the heck I was thinking. And then she's like, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. <laughs> and we're like, we really got the car on two wheels, <laughs> turning the curve to <laughs> my poor mom. I don't know how she made it. <laughs> And then there was another time we we're on this back road, Louisiana back road. It was like dirt, right? We're, we're back there. And so we're, we've done the driving and now we're going to switch back. Like she's going to get back in the driver's seat because we're now we're getting on the road. And so she gets out of the car and I got out of the car. And then we realized that the car is rolling. And so she's like, yeah, is the car park? Is the car park? And I'm like, what? So now she's like running backwards with the car. She's like, it's in reverse. It's in reverse. Oh my God. I don't know how my mom lived on it. She just. 
so I, I had apparently not put it all the way in park. I had like left it in reverse, and so she's running backwards with the car. All the kids are in the car. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> She's probably freaking out at that point, going, oh, no, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I, my daughter, Rachel, when I was teaching her how to drive, we lived out in the country, and I was teaching her on a country road, and we went down this one road, and it's kind of a road that goes between two giant um, sunflower fields, right? Oh, yeah. And it of pretty good windy turns and and a couple of times she'd take the turns a little bit fast and whack 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 you know she'd hit she'd hit a few sunflowers <laughs> and I told her she needed to stop hitting the sunflowers because they were going to dent my car and she says but mom we'll have sunflower seeds when we get home <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> All right, well, I got my piece done. I, I haven't trimmed it, you know, so um, on the back, you can see, I'm going to try to show you, um, she's got these little faint lines right here, and it says TRP. I, listen, don't, don't ask me to remember what that stands for, but basically what those are is you're going to stitch um, like a, a basting stitch right over that line and you want to have your stitch at like 3.0 or larger if you want because you want to be able to pull it out after you use it but basically these trp lines that she has um help you to put the pieces together so especially since this is a curve um now personally i kind of um i think i do it better like um without the trp but if you the trp will help you now the places where i found that the trp lines were very helpful was when you were putting the pieces to the larger pieces together um, because then you could take it and you're going to match this trp line to the trp line on the other piece as long as you line them up together then you know that you're you're getting it exactly where it needs to be for everything to go together properly so that's what the trp lines are um practically it's not a it's not a dart it is it's a it's a basting stitch and a registration line right like you're gonna you're gonna pull it out so that's only it's temporary this is gonna you're gonna pull that straight out after you match your seams together so it's not permanent it's not um yeah it's not a dart or anything it's basically a guideline of how to join pieces together um so that's what that is that's the exp explanation for that um yeah so we've got that piece done and here it is again and it's got a place and like with this one because it's going around there are going to be like eight pieces like this um and then they'll go around the whole quilt around the outside so um that was a lot of fun guys that was fun i hope you guys had a great time and um it's 9 58 so i'm gonna try to finish right on time tonight as usual i have not eaten dinner i'm pretty starving i have no idea what i'm gonna eat maybe i'll have a turkey sandwich because actually that sounds kind of good right now with some toasted bread yeah, that sounds good. I might um, try uh, an actual cup of, uh, uh, I might try some ramen this evening. I've had ramen the past couple of nights, um, and I've been liking it a lot. I love ramen, you know. Um, I might have ramen. I tried ramen. I tried ramen, but I couldn't really eat it very much because, I don't know, it was making me sick there for a while. So I'm hoping I can stomach it tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I know you tried coffee and it wasn't ready. You weren't ready yet. Oh no, that was not quite not quite a good idea. <laughs> I decided I would stick with the tea for now. Gotcha. Sounds good. Um, okay, so thanks, Nita. I appreciate you coming on and helping me out. It's been a lot yeah, of fun. Absolutely. Uh, love you to bits. You know that. And. I know. I want to mention because I, I always forget and I'm so sorry, but 
I am all caught up on my orders in my shop. And that is in no small thanks to Sherry Geyer, who came over to my house and helped me to finish putting those orders together. So thank you so much, Sherry. Huge help. And um, <laughs> took a, such a load off me. And um, I, y'all, I have the best friends. I have the best friends anyone could ask for. And um, I'm just going to stop right there. And I will see you guys, if not next week, then in two weeks. And we'll continue on. Hopefully I can find my other project. <laughs> and I can show you how far I've gotten with this one, which I certainly will do. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate all of you. And I hope you will come over and join us in Piecing It Real. And use the code. First. I will say, if you join Piecing It Real, the next, the next Zoom meeting will be not next week but the week after correct right? correct because we just had a movie this week so it's every other monday and you'll jump, in, you'll jump in and be able to get to get involved in one of the zoom meetings and see just how much fun we have yes and we're doing a block of the month so we're only on february you can totally catch up and um so i'll see you guys definitely in two weeks <laughs> Good night, guys. Good night, all.